What's your blood sugar? What's the optimal level? My absolute favorite health optimization measurement, now there's a lot of them, but blood sugar is my favorite. If you go to the doctor today, they see so many people that are up around 100 on their blood glucose, their blood sugar. They consider that pretty normal. Most doctors will say, oh, you're good to go. That's normal. They give you a pat on the back. You take off. You think everything's good. Have you ever worked for Dr. Francis? Oh, yeah. He's okay. Just okay? This is true now more than ever with COVID because high blood sugar, hyperglycemia, is a predictor of death when you get COVID. And it's actually a predictor of literally dying of any cause if you've got high blood sugar. So it's an important thing to consider. And this is true regardless whether you have diabetes or not. Just if you have high blood sugar, it's a strong predictor of all cause mortality, meaning death of any cause. So let's go to the American Diabetes Association and see what they say. Looking at their website, they say that the normal range is less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. Pre-diabetes between 100 and 125, and diabetes is over 126. Now these are fasted blood sugar levels. You check them in the morning when you first wake up. Basically you don't wanna be eating food and then checking your blood sugar because it's all over the place. How do you check your blood sugar? You buy a $20 finger pricking unit at CVS. It's called the blood glucose monitor. You prick your finger, you put a drop of blood on it, and then you check it. It's that simple. You don't need to go to the doctor. You can check it at home, you can do it yourself. Children do this all the time. And it's important that you do too. The normal range is less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. There's a lot of tests that basically agree with this. Most lab tests say if you're under 100, you're fine. And again, most people coming into the doctor, that's what they're getting. So they think that's fine. But my goal is to be optimal, and I hope that's yours too. So let's look at the research. We've got a study on fasting blood glucose. It's a 22-year follow-up of healthy, non-diabetic men. And I think this applies to women as well. They found men with the highest blood sugar, anybody above 85, had significantly higher death rates from cardiovascular disease. And this was after they adjusted for smoking and blood pressure and all kinds of other health issues that could potentially confound the study. So 85 was the magic number there. Let's check some other studies. In 2010, they did a study called the Bogalusa, <laughs> called the Bogalusa study. In 2010, they did a study looking at children because children have higher metabolisms so they can handle blood sugar better, presumably, than adults. Because as we age, we become more sensitive to these health problems. Our metabolism goes down. Our genetic weaknesses become more apparent and more obvious. Our children can kind of get away with a little bit more cheating in their diet and things like that. Well, let's look at it. Children with fasting glucose levels between 86 and 99 had more than double the risk of developing pre-diabetes and full-blown diabetes as adults compared to children whose levels were less than 86. So once again, that 85, 86 number comes up. Moving on, the New England Journal of Medicine has published a study on this. The beauty of this study was they had over 13,000 people. In addition, they were making more clear distinctions and separating people that were obese and people that had high triglycerides and other factors and looking at multivariate analyses. To summarize the study, the hazard ratio shot way up, once again, when people started to get up over 86. So again, you don't wanna be above 86 on your fasted blood sugar. Now switching gears and looking at low blood sugar, they've done some epidemiology, meaning population-based observational studies, and they've actually seen some problems with low fasting blood sugar. But the hazard ratios in this study are basically inconsequential, around 1.0. The previous studies we were looking at here regarding high blood sugar had hazard ratios over 8.0. Yet these types of epidemiology studies are more cited and far more headline-grabbing studies that the media loves. And honestly, they confuse far more people than they help. Plus... This is a Taiwanese study, and they were probably studying a group of people that were literally starving to death, which carries its own health and life-threatening risks. So I'm not convinced being below 70 on your fasted blood sugar is dangerous, particularly if you're exercising, you're eating healthy, you're in ketosis, you've got nutrition. But the key is to keep it below 86. Now this might take some dedication. It definitely requires lowering your carb intake if you're eating a standard American diet. So you want to stay optimized? Do you want to be optimized? Get that blood sugar down below 86.